Namaskaram seekers of wisdom are you ready to read to unravel the enigmatic concept of karma with sadguru today we embark on a transformative journey into the depths of our consciousness in today's captivating video sadguru delves into the intricate nature of memory and its profound influence on every aspect of our being mind emotion and even our genetic makeup so get ready to explore how memory intertwines with the intricate weave of karma within the human system shaping our life in a way we may not fully comprehend join us as sadguru explains the intricate working of karma shedding light on how our action ripples through the fabric of existence and discover the profound impact of our energy on the world around us and learn a simple yet powerful tool to unravel 90% of your karmic puzzle so let's dive into the essence of karma and unlock the secret of living a more conscious and harmonious life now the essence of all this is first thing is to understand the nature of how existence is happening. Either you can look at this or you can look at the atom or you can look at the universe. If you want to look at the universe, it is complex, it is difficult because you don't have a gallery seat. There is no… Uh, it is not like a stadium, you can sit somewhere and watch the whole universe. Very difficult, you can only see it in pieces. If you want, an a want, want to watch an atom, nobody has seen an atom, do you know this? Do you know this? Even in a super electron microscope, you can't see an atom. We have observed its activity, but we have never seen an atom as such. But we have broken it. We are capable of breaking things that even we cannot see. That's our… we are very proud of this these days <laughs> We can break anything. We can make it or not is a questionable thing, but we can break anything we want. Even if we cannot see it, we can break it. Now what you see and what you do not see itself is a very dicey thing in the sense, <laughs> what is it that you can see? Right now can you see my hand? Yes. You can see my hand only because my hand stops light. If my hand did not stop this light, if it allowed light to pass through, you wouldn't see this hand, yes? Or in other words, Right now your visual apparatus can see only those things which stop light. Anything that allows light through, you cannot see it. You cannot see life, light itself, first of all. Only whatever stops light, you can see it. What does not stop light, you cannot see it. Very bad, isn't it? You must be able to see all those things which allow light to pass through because they are important things. But right now your visual apparatus had trained to see or capable of seeing only that which stops light. So the whole process of seeing life the way it is means, first of all evolving an eye, a thoughtless eye, an eye which is free of thought. When I say free of thought, it is free from the taint of memory. Right now these two eyes are heavily loaded with memory. So you can see this, if you see a group of people like this, if you just casually look like this, if the… among these hundreds of people, if there is one face that you are familiar with, you will see suddenly that face sticks out. Have you noticed this? Have you noticed this? You are going in a street, there are hundred people standing there, your friend is among that. If you look here, just this friend's face is more clear than the rest of the faces because this eye works with memory. The more memory you have, the better it sees. No memory, it cannot see. Memory means an accumulated past. Memory means information. Memory means that which does not exist but acts out as if it does. Memories are more real than reality, isn't it so? Yes or no? See, I want you to understand, everything in your life is run by memory. Not just your computer stick, everything in your life, 
When I say memory, not just what you carry here, your very body is a body of memory. Why if you eat a banana, it becomes a masculine body and if she eats a banana, it becomes a feminine body, is simply because of the memory that it contains, isn't it? The information that is stored in this body and that body is different. Same banana, it becomes a man, same banana, it becomes a woman. Yes or no? Are you eating different types of bananas? Same thing, same food if you eat, it is becoming one way. In one person it is becoming dark skin, in another person it's becoming fair skin. How? The memory that you carry, do you remember your great, 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 great grandfather? You don't, but his nose is sitting on your face. Your body remembers, isn't it? You may not have no idea who it was, but your body remembers even today. A million years ago, how your forefathers were, still it remembers, isn't it? So what you call as my body is just a body of memory, and eyes are loaded with memory. An eye which is loaded with memory, an eye which is corrupted with memory, cannot see anything the way it is. It will only see things as it is convenient because the software is working from inside. It will not allow you to see anything the way it is. This is what traditionally we are referring to as karma. It is there in your body, it is there in your energies, it is there in the way your chemical reactions happen, it is there in your brain, it is there in your mind, it is there in everything, in the very physical energy that you carry, there is memory because you will see each person's energies behave differently from the other simply because of the type of memory it carries. If you want to get rid of this, it's a long process. And if you get rid of this, dismantling of the personality and the body will happen. So another way is to create a distance from it. Just hold it little away. When you want to play with it, you play with it. When you want to switch it off, you must be able to switch it off. So for this, an external view is needed. Right now, your ears are loaded with memory, your eyes are loaded with memory, your tongue is loaded with memory. Why? <laughs> if you are born in Karnataka, if you go to North India, food doesn't taste good is because the tongue is loaded with memory. Yes or no? Have you suffered this or no? You went north and uh, they said, alu bhaji, alu... <laughs> Alu matter, anu, alu palak, alu parota, alu, 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 they said. You couldn't stay there because your tongue is loaded with memory. It wants the same things back, otherwise it will suffer. So what being loaded with memory means is a cocoon of the past is holding you. It will not allow you to even move into the present. A cocoon of the past holds you. And you allow it to do this because it feels safe, it creates a cocoon. There is safety, but in safety there is also imprisonment. You are really safe if we lock you up in a safe, isn't it? But the problem is you can't get out, that's a whole problem. <laughs> walls that you build as self-protection, they also become the walls of self-imprisonment. That is the nature of life. If you lock yourself from inside or outside, it's the same thing. As long as you do not open the door, whether somebody locked you from outside or you locked yourself from inside, there is no difference. Anyway, you're imprisoned, isn't it? At least somebody locked you from outside, you can at least complain and scream. You locked yourself from inside, you can only be depressed. You cannot even scream. Who at whom will you scream? So this process of what we are looking at is the memory imprints itself on all levels. Right up to the elemental level, from the five elements which function here, from just after that, memory's work starts. So when we utter the word karma, it is not one simple formula, 
or it's not, you know, people are saying theory of karma, we are not talking about any theory. We are referring to a certain reality, karma means memory. Action and memory, past action exists only in the form of memory, isn't it so? Yes? Memory not just what you carry here, every cell in the body carries its own memory. Why one atom behaves differently from another atom, though the same ingredients is, it has a memory. A hydrogen atom has one kind of memory, oxygen atom has another kind of memory. Unless you mix them up, they will continue to behave like that. It is in a small circle, you are in a little larger circle, the universe is in a much larger circle, but the same memory rules all of it. So when we said karma, we are not talking about some concept or philosophy, we are referring to a certain reality which is finding manifestation as who you are. The very shape of your body is because of memory. If a bird eats a mango, it becomes a bird. If a worm eats a mango, it becomes a worm. If you eat a mango, you become a human being. Same mango, how many things it's doing, depending upon what kind of memory it carries. Isn't it? You… what you call as a seed, if you plant the same seed, if you plant a seed in the same soil, here you plant a mango tree, here you plant an apple tree in the same soil, this will only produce apples, this will only produce mangoes because seed is a certain amount of memory, isn't it? Whether it is a seed of a plant or your father's seed which enter your mother's womb, it is just memory and memory and memory, isn't it so? This is karma and this goes right back, right up to the elemental level, everything is memory. Only the pure element is free from memory. So the idea, when we start, we're starting off Bhutesha, because that's the most important thing, that he mastered the elements, that's why we bow down to him, because… because he mastered the elements, he has an eye which has no memory, a taintless eye which sees everything just the way it is. So yoga essentially means developing an eye which is not contaminated by memory, which simply sees. It does not see things the way your memory perverts it. It simply sees everything the way it is. This eye will see those things which do not stop light. Right now these two eyes can only see what stops light. If you start seeing something that does not stop light, that means another dimension of the eye is beginning to function. Karma means action. There are four types of action – physical, mental, emotional and energy. Of all these things, the energy action is the most important one and the most enduring one and the most liberating one if you do it the right way. If you do it the wrong way, the energy action which is improper, can have far more impact upon one's life than the improper physical actions, improper mental actions, improper emotional actions. So what do I mean by improper energy actions? One thing is, unfortunately, I had to witness a few things which I did not wish to witness certain people trying to misuse a little flexibility in energy that came with certain practice of yoga or a certain initiation especially. There are some over smart people that when you initiate them, when it's fresh, when they're bursting with energy, they want to use it for something else. They want to <laughs> channelize it to impress their neighbors or to make some money out of it or in some way use it, what was offered to them for their well-being. They try to do something else, that can happen. Or a better example would be, see there are… there are many ways you can perform negative action. One thing is, let's say you sat here and thought that somebody that you don't like must die or you even thought how to kill them it has a certain level of impact on you. On another level, you had a thought, but not just a thought, the strong emotion 
now it has a much deeper impact upon you. You acted upon this thought and emotion and you actually performed the action, then it has a much deeper impact on you. Now, you understand that if you perform these actions, there may be consequences, so you found another way. You found somebody who will do certain type of energy action through which the person that you don't like will die. There is an entire science like this. One Veda among the four Vedas is dedicated to this, this is called the Atharvana Veda, where it's about learning to use energies towards your benefit and other people's detriment. You have heard of words like black magic, voodoo and billy shunyam and whatever else you call it, where people have learned to use energies to cause harm to someone else. Once you energetically try to influence somebody for some benefit of your own, now this will be the worst karma because the impact of this goes very deep into you because you're employing your energies to do this. This is the reason why even to initiate you into a simple process like Shambhavi, I am asking you to take the step of being a mother to the world so that you never misuse this, you see everybody as yours. Because enhancement of energies has to come with a profound sense of responsibility. Enhancement of energies has to happen with deeper dimension of inclusiveness. Without inclusiveness, if you use energy, this will be the worst karma. karma. So, those of you who find some dramatic changes happening in your life because of initiations, you must take care, you must take utmost care that you never try to use this ability to transform to do something else. Of course, uh, some of you think you will do a great thing by healing somebody, by intervening in somebody's life in some other way. No, you, this will be the worst type of karma you perform because once you try to use your energies and still you are capable of anger, you are capable of drawing boundaries of what is you and what is not you, what is yours and what is not yours, when these things are still there, you should never ever try to do anything energetically because this will be the most impactful karma that you will do. This is the reason why even the basic practice of Shambhavi to initiate you, you must become a mother to the world. And this is also a fantastic way to beat your karma. If every moment of your life, if you live with an inclusive emotion of being a mother to the world, not discriminating between what… what is yours and what is not yours, Right now you cannot help discriminating what is you and what is not you, but at least what is yours and what is not yours, if you take it away. You have solved the karmic puzzle ninety percent, believe me, ninety percent. Of all dimensions of karma, you have solved that puzzle. Remaining ten percent, I am there. In the grand tapestry of existence, what is karma but the threads of our past shaping our present? As we unravel this profound mystery, remember that understanding karma is not about dwelling in guilt or fear, but about embracing the opportunity to transcend it. Sadhguru has shared invaluable insight into the intricacies of karma. We have delved into the nature of memory and how it weaves itself into our very being. We have explored how this complex wave influences not just our thoughts and emotions, but our very bodies and genetic makeup. Now, as you conclude this journey with us, know that you hold a key to your own liberation. It is not about avoiding actions but about performing them with awareness and love. It's not about dwelling in the past, but about foraging a path towards a more conscious 
and joyous future. We hope this video has sparked a sense of curiosity within you. A curiosity that drives you to explore deeper into the profound wisdom that Sadhguru imparts. There is a vast ocean of knowledge waiting for you and this is just the beginning. So take a moment to reflect on what you have learned here today. And when you are ready, join us again on this journey of self-discovery. Subscribe to our channel to stay updated with more such transformative content. However, do remember that it's not about likes or subscriptions, but about the transformation that lies within your reach. Thank you for part of this exploration. Until we meet again on the path of realization, Namaskaram.